Hi guys, Mr. Zigner again. Today we're looking at lesson 5-2, adding and subtracting fractions. You can see here we'll be adding and subtracting like fractions, unlike fractions, and looking at a real world example or two. Looking here, in words, what we're really doing to add and subtract these like fractions is to add and subtract the numerator and then write the result over the denominator. Here you can see 1 fifth plus 3 fifths. You just add the 1 and the 3 and you end up with 4 fifths. Or in the case of 11 twelfths minus 4 twelfths, we simply subtract the 11 minus 4 and we end up with 7, 7 twelfths. Okay, so it's our turn. We're doing 7 fifteenths plus 4 fifteenths. So as we saw on the previous slide, we're simply adding the numerators. So 7 plus 4 over the 15. 7 plus 4 is of course 11. Again, over the same 15. The last thing you want to check is if this fraction can simplify. In this case, 11, 15, 11 and 15 have no common factors. So 11 15 is indeed simplified. And there's our answer. Now we have 7 8 take away 5 8 So 8 is our denominator and we're simply subtracting 7 minus 5. 7 minus 5 is of course 2, so our answer is 2 8 However, if you look over here, 2 8 is not a choice. Do you realize why? Well, right here, 2 8 is not simplified. What we need to actually do is figure out the common factor, which in this case is 2. So if we divide, divide the numerator and denominator by 2, we end up with a simplified fraction of 1 fourth. And there we go. So 7 eighths take away 5 eighths is actually 1 fourth. New one, 3 eighths plus 1 fourth. All right, well now we're adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what that common denominator would be. So we have an 8 and we have a 4. What is our LCD? Our least common denominator. Well, in the case of 8 and 4, the smallest number that 8 and 4 both go into is their least common multiple would be 8. So we have 3 eighths plus, well, if we're going to make fourths into eighths, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. So that would end up with 2 eighths. So back to the main problem, we're doing 3 eighths plus, oops, plus 2 eighths. Well, that would just be 3 plus 2 over 8, which is 5 over 8. The last thing you want to ask yourself is can 5 eighths be simplified? And the answer is no. 5 eighths, 5 and 8 have no common factors, so it is already simplified. New one, 7 ninths minus 1 sixth. All right, well, we have unlike denominators. We have to figure out our least common denominator for 9 and 6. We used to do this in the previous chapter, chapter 4. Probably the best way to go about this would be to count by 9s until we find something that 6 goes into. So we have 9, 18, oh wait, we already found it. 18 is our least common denominator. So if we're going to make ninths into eighteenths, we have to multiply by 2. So that would be 14 over 18. In the case of 1 sixth, if I want to make sixth into eighteenths, I want to multiply by 3. 3 thirds. So 1 times 3 is 3. So 1 sixth would be 3 eighteenths. Now we subtract. 14 minus 3 is 11 over 18. Last thing you want to check is can that be simplified? And no, 11 and 18 have no common factors and it's already simplified. Gregory ran three quarters of a mile on Monday and five sixths of a mile on Tuesday. 
how much further, that sounds like subtraction, how much further did he run on Tuesday? So the problem we're going to solve here is 5 sixths, which was how much he ran on Tuesday. We're going to subtract 3 fourths. Now again, we need that common denominator. What's the least common denominator of 6 and 4? Did you figure it out yet? 12. Now, if we're going to make sixths into twelfths, we'd simply multiply by two. That would turn into ten twelfths. And now three fourths. To get that to be twelfths, we multiply by three. Four times three is twelve. Three times three is nine. So really, that's 3 fourths is 9 twelfths. And 10 twelfths, take away 9 twelfths, again, we're just subtracting those numerators, is 1 twelfth. 1 twelfth surely cannot be simplified, and yep, there's our answer. So he ran 1 twelfth more of a mile on Tuesday than he did on Monday. The deli sold 2 thirds of a pound of salami on the first, to the first customer, and three quarters to the second customer. How much salami was sold to the first two customers? This sounds like we're adding these together because we need the total amount sold. So we have two thirds plus three fourths. And again, we have these unlike denominators. The least common denominator for three and four would be 12. Let's convert those. So two thirds, so I'd have to multiply numerator and denominator by four, and that would be eight twelfths, and three fourths, so you'd have to multiply top and bottom, numerator and denominator by three. That ends up becoming nine twelfths. So this one's a nine. Last step, now that we have the numerators, or rather the denominators matching, and they're alike, now all we have to do is add our numerators. 8 plus 9 is, of course, 17 twelfths. Oh, now we run into a new problem. This is an improper fraction, and I surely don't see that answer over here. So it looks like we need to turn this back into a mixed number. Let's see. Pretty quick way to looking at this would be 17 twelfths is really 12 plus 5 over 12. Now here, are these 12 twelfths? That would be 1. And the extra 5, that would be the new numerator over the original denominator. I'll show you this method in class. I'll review this again. But the final answer here is 1 and 5 twelfths. And yeah, there it is. Answer choice D, 1 and 5 twelfths. Well, that's the end of adding and subtracting fractions. Again, when the numerators, when the denominators are the same, you can simply add the numerators together. When the denominators are different, first thing to do is find that LCD, convert both fractions, and then add and subtract the numerators like normal. Thanks a lot, guys. Do the questions on my website right below the video, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the 7th grade Math Connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzigner.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.